Welcome back everyone, I'm Proofman from Overclocking TV and we are about to start the final for the amateur here at the Overclocking World Championship 2017 in Poitiers. We are at the Gamers Assembly, this is the biggest LAN party in, LAN party in France and uh, right after the amateur final we'll be able to witness the Europe most awaited match between Neil and Dan Cobb. Dan Cobb currently number one overclocker in the world. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for staying here on the Twitch chat. Go ask your question because right now that's going to be the amateur and the amateur gonna, will be running on system that even you guys can buy. That's the system with a water cooling, uh, you know, just a slight water cooling in it. And uh, that's going to be running on a 6950X CPU on a X99 motherboard with DDR4. Of course, with Seasonic PSUs and AlphaCool all-in-one cooling solutions. So without further ado, let's go and move to the uh, to this match. This will be commented live with Buildoid right from UK right here with us. It will be the guys answering your question and although explaining what is going on. By watching this match, we'll have all the tools and understanding to go to the final match of the Extreme guys. So pay attention. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask that on the live chat. There's a lot of the guys that are doing overclocking right there. They can answer the questions as well as build the way. So let's get right into it. Um, we're going to have to wait for the judge to bring back the participants. And uh, we will be able to, uh, to go live. Just a few seconds away. They are moving in on the tables. <laughs> we will be witnessing the match between Nina and Pika. And actually, Nina is a girl, and that's the first time she's doing overclocking. So someone that may may have been like you before, and she just uh, spent 30 minutes listening to someone explaining how the things works, and then she tried for 30 minutes, and she qualified to get access to this final uh, round, if we can uh, say the, say the least. And Pika was actually here last year, and uh, that was something um, he could have, you know, have some advantage on. But the platform is completely new. The platform went out uh, last year after the event we did here. So basically, Pika is on a completely new setup. Nina is on a completely new setup. They will have 15 minutes to go head on uh, all together. I will have the time for the judge to tune in and uh, maybe launch this new match between Nina and Pika. All right, guys, so we are ready to start um, the final of the amateur uh, ambient cooling competition here at the uh, HIBOT World Tour 2017 in Poitiers. So we have uh, Nina here, who is going to challenge uh, Pika. Um, good luck to you guys. Two times 15 minutes. Are you ready to go? OK. Five, four, three, two, one, go. There we are off. They have 15 minutes to do the best score out of this benchmark that is called XTU. So, Bill Zoid, for someone that just tuned in right here on the live from Twitch, uh, what can people accept, expect from uh, to see and actually how does that work? So, XTU is short for Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. It is a program um, that basically allows you to overclock your computer from the from inside the operating system as normally you would like once you get more advanced you usually work from the bios but to just start people off it is best to start off on uh extreme tuning utility because for one thing if you crash it doesn't keep your settings so you don't have to go through a you know like a recovery procedure which on some other boards is a bit more difficult than on others um the other benefit is it has it's very easy to use compared to a BIOS. As some BIOS, like the options in BIOSes aren't completely standardized naming-wise. Uh, the How the BIOSes navigate is also not uh, standardized. It varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. So Intel Extreme, uh, Extreme Tuning Utility may not give you as much in-depth uh, access as the BIOS. However, it does give you all the necessary basics to get a uh, you know basic working overclock running and that's what they're using right here. Thank so, you, Bill Zoid. Ba basically what they are trying to do is to increase the performances as much as they can on the system. And there was a question on how do you judge that? How do you know make the actual competition happen? Uh, basically they use a benchmark, so that's exactly what you uh, described, that's uh, XTU. So this benchmark is although is although uh, a utility that you can change some of the settings inside uh, your computer. Um, and 
this benchmark always calculates the same thing. So this is what is going on right now on uh, on the two screens. Uh, you see this uh, wheel going on. So this is calculation, and the calculation is always, always, always the same, no matter the PC you are on. So as it's always the same calculation, you are able to compare the performances of each of the systems. Uh, what they're going to do today is to just have the score, and the judge will be um, explain, uh, just shutting out the score, and uh, that's just what you need. But if you do that online, you can just go on hwbot.org and submit your score. So there we have, we have the two first scores. So that's going to be the comparison. So as it's exactly the same system, we can compare Nina's score of 1733 to Pika's um, score of 1861. Yeah, so right now they're both running the benchmark again. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, Extreme Tuning, uh, Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility also offers some uh, monitoring uh, down in the bottom left corner of the window. So it gives temperature monitoring, frequency monitoring, and uh, I do believe car uh, active core count monitoring, but it doesn't, do, uh, it doesn't show you how much power consumption you have. Um, and the reason why you would want this monitoring, well, temperature monitoring is really, really important because if your system gets too hot, uh, in the past, that would actually kill your system. Currently, uh, all systems come with built-in safeties to basically prevent you from completely frying a system by letting it get too hot, uh, as there are built-in safeties that will throttle back frequencies. And if you keep going, uh, if the temperature still keeps going up, um, you will hit a thermal shutdown limit where it'll just shut the system down instead of trying to, you know, save it by lowering frequencies and voltages on its own. So that's uh, so basically keeping track of the temperature is is like the first thing you really need to know about overclocking as well as the the voltages. Too much voltage gives you too much temperature, but also even if your temperatures are at relatively in check, uh, too much voltage alone does kill. Um, and for the architecture we're actually looking at here, which is Broadwell eCPUs, so both of our contestants are on 6850Ks. Um, the maximum temperature recommended for sort of daily overclocking would be like 85 degrees, but since they're just running benchmarks here, um, you know, it doesn't really matter how high the temperature gets. If it does get too high, and we're talking like 90 degrees, uh, the safety, uh, the initial safety thermal throttle starts kicking in, and it will actually lower their score. So here they really want to avoid that uh, safety throttle because if the basically the goal here is to get the highest score. So if you hit the safe, uh, temperature safety limit, um, you're going to lose, you know, your score is going to go down and you're going to lose the competition. So yeah, that's here something they're that pretty can much... Happen. Like the, the thermal throttling, that's something that happened for everyone. This is a safety feature that is built in all the systems for you guys to uh, not actually burn down your computers. Um, and, and the fact that this safety is here is actually a good thing for most of the amateurs because they don't have to uh, go deactivate all the limits and so on, that they can still bench and go as far as they can within the limit of, uh, of this system uh, per se. So basically, the overclocking, there's, there was a lot of discussions like, oh, is it, is it uh, difficult to do? Is it dangerous to do? Um, it is not difficult. It's super easy. It's just a matter of uh, just knowing the settings. And in our case, that's the CPU core multiplier. Uh, CPU base frequency and uh, then we have the CPU cache ratio and that's it. We have three settings to change and the benchmark. Basically, the higher the score, the better the performances. That's as easy as it gets. So, yeah, and the other settings actually accessible through uh, Intel's extreme tuning utility are uh, core voltage. So basically, if as you raise uh, operating frequencies on CPUs, you generally need to give them more voltage because um, just due to how the internals of CPUs work, uh, at too low voltages, they are not able to run at such high frequencies and they will crash, um, which we've so far not seen a single crash. Uh, we should be seeing them as both of our contestants aim ever higher uh, at, with their frequencies, assuming that's what they actually do, because so far we've mostly been seeing them play around with their voltages and their power limits and not actually doing much more to uh, and running pretty much the same frequency. Uh, pretty much the same frequency throughout as they have used these 68, well, not necessarily the same 6850Ks, but similar 6850K based systems. And they generally all, you know, 
a certain type of CPU generally tops out in the same range. So that, it makes that, sense. That, that, that is why the, uh, the the configuration are pretty close, even though they can have some differences. Uh, the fact that yeah. they have to switch after 15 minutes, that gives them the chance to experiment and experience the scores on the two platform. And the addition of the scores give them the final uh, scores in the, in the end. So this is just one uh, one out of, it's one game out of two rounds. And uh, that gives them like a exact same chance to compete uh, together on the on the process. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's super uber noisy here at the venue. It's crazy. <laughs> right, we do have Nina uh, benching right now uh, on the other side of the uh, of the of the tables. We had Pika that is just restarting, so let's focus a little bit more on Nina. If uh, we take back into account what the uh, Buildzoid just explained us. Um, the, the benchmark will be uh, calculating the systems. If we look at the package temperature at the lower and right side, we have uh, a few uh, gauge and uh, numbers on it. Package temperature, that means the CPU temperature of uh, uh, within the system. Uh, the max core frequency, this is the maximum uh, frequency of the processor. This is very important to, uh, to note that this frequency is just the maximum one. Uh, the reason why is because you can have different cores, so different calculation unit inside your CPU, and all these different units can act at different speed. So what we do have here is just the maximum speed of uh, one of the cores, so one of the calculation units. Then we do have the processor cache frequency. The processor cache frequency, that's something that is used for interacting with the memory, for interacting with some of the uh, memory inside the CPU and some memory outside of the CPU as well. Um, if we get to the second line, we have active core count. So that means the number of core that are actually, uh, that are being used right now. And thermal throttling, if that one switched to yes, that means it's too hot and that's the safety features that is uh, triggering right in to reduce either the frequency or the uh, speed of the processor to not damage it. So this is something that is always activated by default on all the computers that you buy, and this is why it is safe to do overclocking like this. So one thing I'm finding very, very interesting here is that Nina has been basically just pushing the cache voltage up and down. And for those of you unaware, Broadwell E actually has two uh, separate frequency regions, one of them being the cache or uncore, uh, and the other frequency region being, well, ring, cache, uncore. There's a number of names depending on which motherboard vendor you're looking at. Um, and then you have the actual core clock. And now the, the cache, ring, uncore, whatever you want to call it, uh, generally doesn't impact performance as much as the core clock does. However, it does actually have a re reasonably uh, heavy impact on actual CPU thermals. And uh, also, her cache clock isn't actually that high. Broadwell E CPUs generally max out between, you know, many of them will be able to go up to 3.7 gigahertz cache. Um, so 3.5, uh, she's running it at only 3.5 gigahertz right now. And the other thing um, is the voltage, to me at least, seems really high for the, the cache voltage. She what does have that. What would you recommend setting. as a voltage? What would you recommend for someone that is just starting as a voltage to start with? I do believe I start cache voltage at around 1.25, and I actually just let it sit there on, on X99 at least. Um, now, vCore, I actually go a lot. Uh, vCore is the one I usually tend to go really high on. Uh, unfortunately, vCore really, really like gets your power consumption going through the roof really, really quick. And with the cooling system that they have here, they'd actually run into the thermal pumping really, really hard if they, actually, if, if they were to raise the core voltages any higher. Uh, 1.4 volts is quite a lot on a 6-core CPU, on, uh, well, on a 6-core Intel like the 6850K. So... And um, how is the process? How, you, how do you train people on, uh, on doing this? So uh, w we just talked about the core frequency and the cache frequency. How, that can, uh, how can this be uh, done by someone at home right now? So... Like, how, how do you teach people this, or like, yeah, sure. how do they how, set... How can, for someone that just tune in and say, okay, now I understand why they do it, how can I do it for me, for myself? Okay, so, 
the the crash course on overclocking. Go on Google, find what maximum voltage you're allowed to run on whatever architecture you're running. That is pretty readily available information. If you're already on Google, you might as well go find a guide. But I guess you don't want to hear that from me. So uh, <laughs> crash course is um, essentially you want to know your maximum voltage, your maximum temperature with these two pieces of key information, which will prevent you from blowing your stuff up. And that is actually a very real risk if you, well, temperature, not really a problem. The voltage one is, as not everything has all the safeties it should. Right? That, that's that's a minor issue. But uh, if, as long as you know what your maximum voltage is and your maximum temperature is, uh, you can go and basically uh, you would raise the frequency. Right? You, you would dial in a safe starting voltage, which would be well below the absolute maximum voltage because you need to figure out if your cooler is actually a limit first. Um, so you would start with a safe low voltage. And for, say, Broadwell E, I would recommend start like five uh, volts. So Broadwell E is the architecture we're looking at here right now. And then you would start incrementing the frequency until the CPU starts to crash. And the CPU crashes, you would go and increase the voltage until it stops crashing. And assuming your voltage is still below the safety limit, right, you would go and, well, basically then you raise the voltage until until it stops crashing. If you keep raising the voltage beyond the safe limit, then you just have to give up on that clock. Um, now then, assuming that you didn't hit the safe voltage limit uh, and the system has stopped crashing, you can go and try and increase the clock again and then raise the voltage until it stops crashing. And you would just step by step work your way up like this until eventually you hit a frequency where either your temperature, uh, a frequency voltage combination, where either your temperature or voltage is beyond the safe limit specified for uh, whatever CPU you have. So that's like the really watered down version of what that is, uh, of, of how you would do this. Um, so. Yeah, thank you very much. The, Thank, thank you for actually for for explaining a little bit of, of the guys, but that, that limit that you can you can hit. Um, keep in mind that we remind you guys that there is features and safety features that are always in. Uh, as long as you're not going out full crazy on deactivating that, uh, not going to be an issue um, in your system. Unfortunately, some motherboards might have an over protection, like, like over voltage protection, but they'll not like stop you from setting the voltage. They'll just tell you you set a really high voltage. Which is, you know, less than ideal. But temperature, temperature uh, protection is actually great. Like y you won't be able to accidentally go over temperature really hard. Um, but accidentally setting too much voltage is something I've seen a few people do on like beginner forums. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 one like really. It's just, if you're not sure if the voltage is safe, go ask. There's plenty of overclocker forums out there uh, where people will be happy to help you with pretty much anything. So. All right, and, and we're just witnessing, this is the end of the first part of the match. Right now, we see that uh, on Pika's screen, there is nothing anymore because the, the last score was, uh, was being published and actually submitted to the, to the, uh, to the judge. The only one left is from Nina, and Nina is still at 1800 points. If she scored better than 1800 points, that would be a valid score because it was started before the end of the timer. And 1783, that's not better than 1800. So uh, sadly, that's not what uh, she could move on later uh, with that. So what will happen now is the two, so Pika and Nina, will exchange seats. Make sure that they all have the right, um, the, the, the time and the right, uh, the equal chance to uh, define exactly the same settings and maybe beat the other guys. So, Bizarre, what do you expect from the second end of the, uh, of the match? Well, um, you know, I, I think we're... So, we, I, it seems like we have this very similar situation as uh, last amateur match where we had one system which was quite a bit behind the other. And uh, Nina is actually doing really, really well. Um, she's not that far behind on the slower system of the two. So I'd say it still can go either way. Either of them can still win because, you know, they've just traded systems. And if Nina can't beat uh, Pika's score on his old system, then, you know, he's in the lead. And if he can't beat her score, then she's in the lead. So... Um, 
it really can go either way, or one of them can get a massive advantage in points on one of the systems as well. That That's uh, another option. So it will be interesting to see how this evolves from here. I can't wait to see the uh, the other match, and we could uh, we could now uh, move on to the next one. Uh, if one last thing. All right, so the two are now ready. I got the the uh, sign from the judge that it will be okay to go for the next part of this match. That's gonna be 15 minutes again. Of course, that's gonna be uh, fun to see who can win this second part of the game and make the total amount of score on XTU in their favor for that. So the judge are actually waiting for uh, Nina. She just went to uh, <laughs> she just uh, take a short break. So we're just gonna have a little bit more uh, time just before the uh, the game will be starting. Got the information that she is now back in the game up to the judge. All right, guys, are you right? ready? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So same rules. 15 minutes. This is the last round of this final. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Here we go back. This is the last time for them to submit an awesome score into the scoreboard to make them have take uh, to have to take the lead. Uh, Nina is at 1800 points right now. Uh, then she's gonna have to score higher than what Pika will be able to do on on the platform. So if if at the first start Nina managed to do 1850 that's gonna be extremely well for her uh, we're gonna wait to have Pika to see if he can go higher than 1800 so all this will be um, balancing the outcome of this match so Nina is already straight in back into your uh, into the bench and already going there so that was extremely fast let's have a look at the settings so if we look a little bit closer from what we have, uh, she is running at 4.5 gigahertz, and uh, the package temperature is around 55 to 60 degrees. Um, the processor cache frequency is at 2.9 maximum, 3.2 maximum, so that is uh, uh, quite okay. Six core, so everything is uh, activated. We're gonna have the first score on the scoreboard by Nina in the next few seconds. Wait for it. And 1848! This is exactly, this is already 4,800, uh, 48 points higher than the score she had on the previous platform. So now yeah. her uh, her opponent's gonna have to do uh, better than uh, better than that. One interesting thing to know is that Nina's system is actually running 100 megahertz faster than Pika's right now. So uh, Nina is at 4.5 gigahertz and Pika's at 4.4. And I actually think this is con like th this is a limitation of the platforms because voltage-wise they're very very similar. Um, Nina's system is at 1.47 volts, uh, Pika's is at 1.43 volts. Neither of these voltages, well, 1.43 is pretty close to dailyable. Uh, 1.47 is well beyond that. So, um, and for, if you look for at the score, I mean, the first score put by Pika on the second platform is already higher than the best score from Nina. So the guy and in 30 seconds already maxed out what Nina did in 15 minutes just before. Yeah, and interestingly enough, uh, Pika hasn't changed the power limit. The the main power limit slider, he's left it at unlimited. Interesting, though he has lowered the power turbo boost power limit, which somebody hasn't explained to them how the power limits work, as far as I'm concerned at this point. Because he has, like, he has one of his power limits is completely maxed out, which is fine. That, that's, honestly, if I was overclocking, I would max both of the power limits because you don't really want to hit uh, a power um, the, you don't want to hit the power limit and start throttling your frequency before you hit the temperature limit, right? Um, uh, you can deal with the, you, you, you as the overclocker actually have more control over the temperature limit than you have over the power limit, so to speak. I mean, you can blow the power limit out, so that gives you control, but temperature is really the hard wall. Power is never really a concern. Most of the time, you don't really care how much power you pull in, so as long as you can cool it. So, yeah, Nina is running extremely conservative power settings, right? She's at 180 watts power, uh, turbo boost short power limit and turbo boost max power, uh, power, power max is 140 watts. So that's a very low power limit. Interestingly enough, she does have the current, uh, current limit maxed out. So that, that's like power being a 
combination of current and voltage, having a maxed out current limit while having a really low power limit doesn't make sense. Um, which, well, they are amateurs, so hopefully they'll discover <laughs> um, the magic we, of we maxing just the power tell them limit. During the competition, right? We're gonna tell them after in the debrief, like, okay, do you understand why yeah. it was limiting the factor and you know? That's, uh, yeah. that's something that was uh, quite interesting. That's something we can do live with you guys right here because that's something that they cannot hear us uh, up, up fully. So we can see that actually Pika did like two or three runs, like 1800, 1800 or two, but didn't manage to go above 1800 or two so far. Uh, Nina had the same kind of issue running at 1700 something and then back at 1800, uh, uh, 1800 point. Um, that is, you know, um, if we look at the score, so Pika already did a better score than Nina. That is yep. uh, good. I mean, by two points, but still, this is a better score. And if we look, uh, I mean, a bit more in details to the scoreboard, Nina at 18, uh, 1848 on the platform, uh, Pika managed to max out at 1861. So that means there's still about 13 points that can be grabbed right here. Even though that's the case, she still have to grab that 13 point difference and the two extra points from the platform that you guys uh, yeah. are mentioning on. She has a lot of catching up to do. 1851, and 1851. Well, 1851 I mean, point, that is... It is a, it's an increase and if she keeps this up, um, well, she actually has to increase that score a little bit faster than the current rate as almost five, well, well over five minutes have passed, <laughs> so... Um, so as you can see, it's not because you have the exact same system that you will score the exact same thing. Of course, when you do play games, that's not something you're gonna uh, notice a big difference. That's gonna be one, two FPS. That's not gonna be like 25 wow. FPS in the difference. Um, but here, GPUs? what we do, uh, yeah, <laughs> GPUs as well. But when or we do, or 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 you're running at a thousand FPS, and then 25 percent, then 2.5 percent is actually 25 FPS. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, actually, that's yeah, why I don't yeah, like okay. like when people are like, oh, yeah, my FPS way, is 10. Yeah. I have 10 FPS more. And I'm like, 10 FPS against what? 100? That's nothing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, for gaming, CPU overclocking doesn't really do that much. But it does show very, like, benchmarks are very, very good at showing uh, CPU uh, performance differences. And actually, they're great for GPUs as well. But GPU overclocking... Uh, is actually even safer than CPU overclocking to some extent, and simpler. A uh, lot less stuff to play with, but you know, then we wouldn't have anything to teach anybody. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, actually, if you look at what Nina just did, I don't know if you guys um, watched, she, she just went back to the settings and just increased the voltage core. This actually does nothing whatsoever. Does well, nothing. Because she doesn't change the frequency. And right. there is no thermal throttling, there is no uh, information that some of the C some of the cores or calculation unit of the CPU are being limited by a lack of voltage. She should be rather increasing, uh, reducing the uh, voltage and maybe trying to increase a little bit the base frequency. Well, she cannot do it right here, but well, that's what yeah. someone will have to do. It so actually, I, I think what's very interesting is both of our uh, both of our amateur overclockers here are playing a lot with the voltages and not with the frequencies, which, you know, as as an experienced overclocker, um, I'd say most of the time, right, I play with the frequency. Admittedly, when you're cooling limited like they are here, because they are, uh, you know, the water cooler they are using is great. It is very, very good. But X99 is a hot pl running platform. And so, you know, the temperatures we're seeing are actually reflecting that these CPUs are, when not power limited, going well above 80 degrees um, and not that far from their actual thermal, you know, thermal limit. So, you know, that's one thing. But the interesting thing here is like they are playing with the voltage a lot more than I think they should be. Um, trying to tweak the base clock a little bit would probably give them better performance gains here. Uh Trying to get the cache clock higher, honestly. Um, X99, uh, it is hard to go sort of past 3.5 gigahertz, but generally you can go as high as 3.7 if you have a, a good CPU that is capable of good cache overclocking. Um, so, and actually Pika is build, getting a bigger lead here as he has just got, uh, as he now has an 1807 score on the uh, slower of the two systems. 
And Nina is currently running the benchmark. And I'm not 100% certain how accurate the max cork or frequency readouts for XTU are, because last I checked, X99 can't do fractional multipliers, and that is not 4.2 or 4.3 or 4.4 gigahertz flat. But it does look like she is hitting some kind of uh, limitation, and I'd be inclined to believe that it's her 180 watt power limit on a platform that I've personally tested to pull well in excess of 200 watts if, well, given the given the rain, uh, the allowance to pull more power. That, that's interesting to see that indeed, as, as we say earlier, they're just touching the voltages and the voltages on this kind of platform, you have to find the sweet spot between high enough to sustain the speed, but low enough to not overeat and go into yeah. thermal throttling. Yeah, really, I'd, it's like, you know, it'd be a goal, like, if, if you have a power limit issue, right? No, oh. blow out the power limit. If you have a temperature issue, lower the core, Nina, core Nina voltage. Crashed. Nina crashed. She just crashed inside the benchmark. Maybe she was um, either... The temperature was not that high. I mean, 60 degrees, that's not that's not too big. And we got a blue screen! woo hoo, -hoo! And yeah, that's what happened. So when the system crash, and it's not a hard crash, so a hard crash that's gonna, just gonna shut down the computer, when it's like a soft crash, so that means it crashed, but it's still um, decent enough to continue running in the background, like making the memory dump and so on, you just um, uh, just gonna end up with the blue screen. So when it freezes like this, on this kind of platform, it takes about like five to six seconds, and then you have a blue screen. So when it crashed, that's exactly what we were expecting to happen, like a blue screen or ad, uh, an uh, art reboot. So the platform just going to restart completely for it. So yeah, uh, sorry, headphone users. I, I actually moved like one meters away from the microphone to yell that. But uh, yeah, uh, welcome to the stream. <laughs> um, so Pika is going to have a new score pretty soon, and Nina has finally gotten back into the operating system. Could we could we see what she is doing to all her settings? Thank so, you very uh, much. Call voltage at one point forty five. Uh, turbo boost short. One point four eight five. Yeah, that's that's high. That's, that's really high. That's super high for for this CPU. Cash ratio thirty five. Yeah. Cash voltage will be at one thirty five. That's not too bad. And, and to, the processor okay. current limit is at the maximum. But she didn't touch at all the uh, the, the power, power limit. Tool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just so bizarre. It's like, why are you maxing the current limit w without Actually, the, touching the, 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 the the maximum power the maximum power limit? It, it's just there to um, the to control the auto overclocking features that is built inside the CPUs. So basically, if you have a CPU, a gaming uh, PC with like a core uh, family CPU or uh, one of the latest AMD CPUs, they do yeah. overclock themselves uh, automatically. You don't even know it. And uh, the fact is, they always have to stay within that uh, turbo boost, what it's called uh, on, on Intel platform, and to basically say, if it's below this turbo boost, the platform itself can just change some of the settings to go uh, faster, maybe on one or two cores, or maybe on one uh, processing unit inside the... the so if you, if you limit that to 140, uh, you will... She, she's right lowering the power limit again. <laughs> and she's just using the short term. So the, 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 the Turbo Boost Power Max, that is the, that is the overall one that you want to have um, at any point in time. But the short one, it's like, okay, over a period of three seconds, uh, can I get a, a certain boost that is higher than what I want to have? So this, uh, for short-term task, will help out the CPU to calculate a little bit faster, but just for short tasks. So that yeah, will be about ba Basically, to, uh, think of the short-term power limit as the idea of... Um, you know, you're you're running a you're running at a leisurely pace, and you can burst sprint for say 20 meters, and that that's what the power and the, the, and the power limit basically says how fast you can do that burst sprint, how how fast you can sprint for that burst. Um, there's actually a separate setting for how long you can do that burst for. Um, that's one way to think of the uh, short-term power limit. But uh, really, I would just max all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Max all the damn power limits. But you're not the typical overclocker as well. I mean, if you guys are just joining in, we are in the uh, in the amateur <laughs> overclocking tournament, and uh, you can actually check Buildzoid uh, Twitch page, uh, Twitch channel, and uh, YouTube uh, YouTube uh, page. Uh, Buildzoid, you can actually pass them in the uh, in the live chat if you want. 
just before the end of the, of this round. And uh, you're doing some crazy sh crazy stuff with your with the system, your modding system, you're modifying hardware, like you're s removing. Stuff I mean, when the, when the software power stuff. limit, when the software power limit isn't high enough. I just cut the power limit out of the hardware. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> yeah, indeed. All um, right, so we have the voltage limit is not high enough. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's never high enough, right? We have uh, yeah, the, one of the last few scores. Yeah, That's the final one minute of the games, and the scores don't manage to change. So far, Pika is in the lead. That is, I mean, Nina have to go catch up at least this 1860 point to be very close from Pika. That will not be enough, but she has to go close from him. Honestly, I'll be very surprised if we see us change in these scores with the fact that they've only been playing with power limits and voltages so far. <laughs> um, this is like, I can assure you, I'm not the one who taught them because those power limit sliders would be completely maxed out. That's it's like my first first word of advice to anybody who uh, I, I spend a lot of time on uh, some overclocking forums and any newcomers who are like, oh, how do I overclock my, my GPU? Can I max the power limit? My automatic response is how to overclock GPU, max the power limit and then change the, push the slider up until it stops working. That's basically all you have to do. And this applies more or less the, the same to CPUs, except with CPUs, you also get the fact that you can play with the voltage, uh, which on a lot of GPUs, you don't actually have access to these days. Well, it's accessible, but it's very, very limited compared to what you get uh, on, on CPUs in terms of tuning options. So did, did we almost We're get a double both, crash? Uh, finished their round. They just started. Uh, Nina actually just clicked at the moment. Uh, I felt the vibration on my hand. Oh, so. we got a blue screen! <laughs> I like that blue screen very much. All right, just Nina left. So Nina is now the only chance that she could increase her score. Which I'm, I, I don't think she will be able to put out like a, a 1868 no. okay. score. And, and she couldn't no. make it. Sadly, she could not make it again. Look at how sad she is. Like, oh, damn it. But what, what All right, so time. To congratulate her two players. Please stand up. Congratulations. And the winner is Pika. Woohoo! Congratulations, Pika. Uh, well done. This is uh, an amateur. We can shake hands. <laughs> hey, boy. All right, so that was a great game, of course. Those guys know each other since a very long time. They've been actually uh, participating in their workshops already last year. Um, they actually spent, uh, I think, almost almost three or four hours on the booth this week, either looking at the, uh, the others, uh, following several of the teaching sessions to get a, a large amount of, uh, of, you know, of knowledge and try to, to do their best. Of course, they're still uh, some things that they could learn uh, from what you could have uh, seen from the from the live stream. Um, so we are going to take a quick um, a quick break, and I guess uh, Bilzoid is going to uh, to do his uh, his after match analysis. Magic. Uh, yep. That's what we call the magic. All righty. Hey guys, welcome back here. We are back at the at the booth space, and <clears throat> yes, we uh, we just added Nina. Uh, just sadly lost in front of Pika. Uh, these two were amateurs, as the judge Tiala just just told us, and we have not that many uh, difference into the into the score point. If we look at the final scores of uh, what we had, uh, Nina is at 3,653 point in total, uh, while Pika is at 3,668 point in total. So as you can see, it's very close. This is very close in between, and that's going to be even closer for the next match. That's going to be the final for the Extreme Overclockers, Dan Cup versus. But let's debrief now on this match. Bilzoid, what, what will be your, your take on this specific match by the amateur? Somebody needs to teach them what the power limit does. <laughs> 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 um, the, the fact that we have one platform that was scoring at best around 1800 uh, versus the other one that was 1860. 150, so there's like 50 to 60 point difference. So how would that translate into...
um, people that are watching us right now on Twitch, uh, how would that translate performances into games? Is that something that could um, I don't know, experience uh, for them? Uh, or that's something that is too short to actually be noticeable. Uh, so, Truff, one thing, uh, your microphone is kind of cutting out, but... Oh, okay, I have to yell faster in mine. All right! So I will <laughs> yeah, yell Yeah, just yell at it. I think it. the noise gate's too high. Um, so, oh, yeah, it should be so... better this way. Yeah, it should be better this way. So I say, uh, we have Nina uh, against Pika. So Nina sadly lost at 3,653 points versus Pika at 3,668 points. So this difference in between the two different uh, score scorings... Um, would that something? Would that be something that would be noticeable by anyone watching this on Twitch right now if they were doing that on the system? Would they? Would you be able to notice on which system you are benching or actually uh, gaming uh, into the performances? Is that something that you could see? No, <laughs> no, you couldn't. I mean, it, it's a, it's a, the difference. Like, if we just look at the frequencies, assuming they even actually had the freaking power limit maxed out and there wasn't a cooling issue and everything was done correctly. 4.5 gigahertz to 4.4 gigahertz is really not that big a difference in terms of actual performance. Um, I think if you were doing like 144 hertz or maybe 240 hertz gaming, then from stock clock to the overclock, you would see a difference. But against the, these two overclocks against each other, under all scenarios would, for all intents and purposes, look identical. Uh, if you actually had some kind of FPS analysis system, yeah, it might pick up on that, you know, one two percent difference between the two systems. But uh, but yeah, one two percent in terms of FPS numbers, but that's not something you could. You can't really, see that. You <laughs> There's no way you're seeing that even if you games. So this is very important here. We're actually making benchmarks so the benchmark will be always the same uh the same things uh, to 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 go for, for the platform and having this benchmark does help a lot in finding who is the best platform but when we say the best platform keep in mind it's the same motherboard same memory same cpu that's the same seasonic psu that's the same uh, alpha cool all-in-one coolers so it's basically two identical systems but the one was able to change and tune it a little bit better than the other one and that's how they get the extra performances for it and this is basically competitive overclocking right you can do overclocking for fun on your system just to get a few more fps like you build it uh, just to told us you you will just gain like from stock to uh, your overclock 25 percent more fps sure actually if you guys want to know how to do that you can uh, go look on youtube it's called scatter bencher uh, S K A T T E R Bencher, and it's actually explaining you in three minutes how to, how to do it and what is actually the impact into the games, into some applications like Adobe, etc., uh, Adobe Premiere. Um, so basically, what we're doing here it's competitive overclocking. Amateur, that's the first new, that's the first level, and then the next one will be the extreme guys. But as for now, we had uh, you remember we had two platforms, and they had to switch in between. Uh, one platform was always stuck at 1800. Um, the maximum even Pika managed to do was 1807. Um, Bilzoid, what, what can we do when we are close to that limit? Is there something we could do to go look for these 60 points that we were missing? So, uh, like, w one thing here is I don't bench a lot of XTU. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be completely well, honest. You used, used to be an AMD guy, so of course, XTU is only on the Intel platform. Well, actually, that's the main issue why I don't bench XTU. <laughs> can't run it on AMD, I'm not running it at all. Um, but, uh... But, uh... The, the, the thing is, like... I do believe that the, neither of those systems was actually fully maxed out yet. I very firmly believe that. Sure I, I think... Yeah, I'm pretty sure as well there's still some um, possibility. I, I think if they both system. maxed out the power limit, and then they'd probably hit, hit the thermal limit at that point, I think. Um, so you could upgrade the cooling, and then it, then it would probably pick up uh, a few extra points on both systems at that point. Um, but the like, I, I think they were pretty close to the, like, you know, the absolute hard limit of what those systems were going to do. And unfortunately you're going to end up in a situation where 
w with basically any CPU, this is where the CPU just stops. <laughs> you know, you you uh, you're gonna need. Well, it's not gonna be so much. It stops there. It's like you're gonna need a lot of vo voltage to go past that, or you're just gonna need unsafe. Basically, you're just gonna need unsafe levels of voltage. Um, you can keep upgrading cooling systems, but eventually you're gonna run into a situation where it's uncoolable, just completely uncoolable. Um, which, you know, you, at some point you hit the limits even of the biggest water cooling loop ever. Once your water temperature is the same as ambient room temperature coming out of the rad, oh, there's not much you can do to make the water, uh, to, to lower the CPU temperature uh, further. So it is very, you know, I, I personally think the, the systems weren't uh, maxed out. Um, but... You know, they, they were relatively close to the limit. I think the, the power limit was actually avoiding a lot of the thermal throttling for them, which um, which would have actually shown if they were actually at the hard limit or not uh, better. So um, somebody on the chat asked, is this in restricted to Intel CPUs? Uh, the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility is indeed completely limited to Intel CPUs. Uh, AMD has, for the new Ryzen CPUs, there is something called a Ryzen Master, uh, which is somewhat the equivalent of XTU. I'm not sure how good it is. I've never used it. Uh, I do all of my overclocking from the BIOS. Um, and personally, I'm a very firm advocate of learn how to just overclock from the BIOS. It generally yields better results. So, you know, uh... That would be one thing. Uh, then for this event, uh, the CPUs are just provided and Intel CPUs are what hardware bot has on hand for these uh, for these events. So, yeah, I think we'll take questions at this point. If, you know, there are 800 of you, you must have some uh, something that you want to ask questions about. So, and it's like. And I am back. We're going to be moving to the award ceremony for the amateur uh, final uh, while the amateur are all still here. It's just a matter of time up until we can move toward this. Uh, this. Somebody asked if Ryzen Master has a benchmark built in. I do not believe it does. Uh, for stress testing, I recommend using. Well, personally, I just do a few runs of Cinebench, which is a long way to do things, but hey, it's funny because I don't care. Um, now, the, uh, for stress testing, we want to use something like. Uh, right now, I. What is it? H265. There was a really good uh, stress test based on the video and the That one was really, really good. Um, gives you a very realistic workload that's not stupid, but it is still heavy enough that it will detect most system instabilities. Um, and I do believe that would be just the H265, which, uh, look up H265 stress 